This is Mike East, the owner of Smart Level, giving you a little tutorial on what we call AR mapping or augmented reality mapping, where the phone actually measures our terrain distances with the augmented reality function of the phone. What I'm doing here is taking the uh, level, pulling enough tubing out to go to the farthest location that we're going to be mapping. That way I don't have to worry about coming back and moving things around and losing our benchmark. Because the benchmark will stay the same, but if we move the, the level, we'll have to uh, come back to our benchmark and re-zero to make sure we've got the zero that we started with. Now, once we pull the tubing out, we've got all the tubing we need, we want to set the level down on a, in a central location that's not going to have to be moved as we're, as we're mapping. If we move it, we want to come back and recheck our zero. The level's a little more accurate if it's laid down flat on its back like that. Now, typically, if I'm mapping, I use a monopod. We've got a little piece of Velcro sometimes. We'll put the Velcro down here that will hold it. And I've got a magnet on my phone, which makes it a one-hand operation. Now, this makes it a lot easier and handier to map everything. I don't have to bend over. On the monopod, if I zero it on the monopod, I'll make my benchmark on the concrete here. Your benchmark needs to be something that you can come back to, uh, hopefully, uh, a year later. If we decide to make a change out here in addition a year later, we can come back and zero on the same benchmark, and all of our readings will be identically aligned with what we did initially today. Okay, we're starting our augmented reality or 3D mapping with a benchmark that's not going anywhere. Hopefully this concrete is going to be here for quite some time. I'm over on the edge. Uh, we're going to zero the level here for our starting point. After five seconds, you hear a little beep. You see the level go to zero. We're going to drop our first point in. Now, sometimes the level, you have to move your phone back and forth a little bit to let it really get the, uh, the location. Okay, I've mapped my first location there. Now we're off and running. We're going to come over to our first cone. I'm going to put my crosshairs right in the cone. We're going to let it settle out just a little bit. I'm going to settle out here at a little over, a little under three inches. Now I'm walking to my second cone. As we're walking, you want to keep the phone the same distance from the ground and walk at approximately the same speed. You don't want to take the phone and move it where it's gathering, looking at different objects because it's, it's figuring its ground distance from the distance from the ground and the speed that you're walking. So you want to walk as straight as you can from point to point, following the same distance off the ground, and we're going to create an outline first, close that outline, then we're going to put our interior points in. That outline is going to help us line everything up later. I'll explain that when we get to it. We're about an inch and a half here. Going up the hill to our next point. We're about uh, 63 inches, a little over 63 inches here. Drop a point in. Going down to our next point. Going to settle out here at about a little under 50 inches, right around 50 inches here. And we just keep going around the perimeter, marking our points. Going to settle out here to about a little over 42 inches. Next point is going to settle in around a little over 46 inches. Now we're going to the top of this other retaining wall just to know the height that we've got there. That sprinkler is running, but we don't have to worry about getting everything wet. That happens occasionally. We're going to drop down to the base of the retaining wall. We're going to settle in a little under four inches higher than where we started. Now you notice the points have gotten bigger here. The phone is trying to keep everything at the same level. 
that won't impact the uh, accuracy or the readings whatsoever if it gets larger and floats like that. When you take a few readings, it'll come back to where it should be. Our next point here, about six inches below where we started. Then we're coming over to the edge of the house. Now we don't return to the same point. We close it one point away from our original or our starting point. We're about four inches or so over here. Then we close the perimeter out. And that closed us to where we started. Now we're going back up the hill and drop in our interior points. We won't have the line following us now like we had, but the level still knows where we are. There's our first point. Um, we're good. Thank you very much. We brought some with us. Appreciate that, though. Our second point is going to drop in about two inches higher than where we were. We're going to drop out here to about four inches higher than where we were. Now we're going up to the top of the hill. We're going to record our final points up here. We'll let the levels drop in, settle out. We'll click that reading. We'll come over to our central point here, once again holding the level about the same height off the ground. Let this one settle out. Click it in. Come back over to this point here. This is going to be our final point. I'm going to drop the tubing there. We'll let the level settle out. We click our final point. Now we're going to save our data. We've got a folder. We can name the folder. And if we're doing multiple locations, you've got several files that you can put in the folder. And we can save six or eight. We can save backyard, front yard, side yard, whatever you want to. That way you've got a master folder name, typically the name of the house. And then I just put map one, map two, map three, or what have you. And we can email this data anywhere here if we want to go, anywhere in the world, virtually. But if you have a design team waiting on you back in the office, it can be there before you roll off the property.